Hey everyone, there are many different types of magnetic machines that are able to do incredible things. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at 15 of the most advanced magnetic machines in the world. Let's begin. Number 15. No Plug Phone Chargers In recent years, phone chargers that don't require you to use a port or a plug have become pretty popular. However, what many don't realize is that these phone chargers actually use magnets to get the job done. More specifically, they work with the help of a special wireless charging pad that uses a copper coil to transfer energy to your device using electromagnetic induction. This energy in turn enters the battery, charging it as would a regular charger. And while these wireless phone chargers don't work with older models, essentially anything made in the past few years by either Samsung or Apple can be charged in that way. Number 14. The Magnetic Slime Bot when you think of a robot, a small metallic figure is probably what comes to mind. However, just this year, a type of robotic magnetic slime was created that blows conventional bots out of the water. In essence, these bots are a substance that combines polyvinyl alcohol, glass-coated neodymium magnets, and borax. Since they're then coated in silicone, they can safely enter the body, and from there, they can do some pretty amazing things. You see, it turns out that doctors can control them in the body like conditions in order to perform minor surgeries, with this including pulling out blockages or connecting ends together. This is possible because the slime can swallow objects, move objects together, and change its physical size, making it extremely versatile. However, only time will tell if they get the safety clearance necessary to be used in hospitals. Number 13. Rail Gun while there are plenty of ways to shoot out a projectile, one of the most futuristic is to shoot it out of a railgun. In essence, these railguns are weapons that have two main rails that are filled with an electric current. These rails then create a magnetic field, and when the energy is propelled forward by shooting the gun, the projectile goes flying. Unsurprisingly, the more current you put into this thing, the faster it shoots the projectile. And it was with such a weapon that U.S. military believed it could create a gun that shoots projectiles at seven times the speed of sound. However, while they did seriously toy with the idea for a few years, they eventually dropped the futuristic railgun concept and instead shifted their focus towards hypersonic missiles. Nevertheless, railguns do exist, and many other militaries are seriously looking into making them a key part of their arsenals. Number 12. The Strongest Magnet When it comes to magnets, the king among kings at the current moment is one that's the size of a small can of soda. Located at the Maglab DC Field Facility in Tallahassee, Florida, it has the ability to create a continuous DC magnetic field that comes in at a strength of 45 and a half Teslas, making it the strongest magnet in the world. Given the fact that the average MRI magnet is between 1.5 and, and 3 Teslas, this is an incredible feat, and scientists believe that the development of this magnet may help lead to the creation of a magnet with a strength of more than 50 Teslas. At the moment, the belief is these magnets could be very useful in testing and creating different magnetic machines. And given the fact these new magnets seem to break the previous world records every few years, I'm sure that these will become more and more common and useful as time goes on. Number 11. The Massive Magnetic Field while the magnet at the Maglab facility may be the strongest magnet on Earth, the magnet that holds the record for creating the strongest continuous magnetic field hails from MIT. Created in a partnership with a startup company known as the Commonwealth Fusion Systems, the device in question is a large, high-temperature superconducting electromagnetic that reaches a field strength of 20 Teslas, making it one of the most powerful magnetic fields of its kind ever created on Earth. The hope is that an electromagnetic field such as this one could then open up the possibilities of creating practical, inexpensive, carbon-free power plants that can use the process of fusion in order to create near-unlimited energy. And while we're still a long way off from that type of energy being a possibility, a device capable of producing a super-strong magnetic field such as this one is seen by many as a key step in the right direction. Number 10. The Large Hadron Collider out of all human-built technology on Earth, perhaps the most advanced device in the world to date is the Large Hadron Collider. It's also known as the LHC. It's part of CERN's accelerator complex in between the borders of France and Switzerland. And by all accounts, it's absolutely incredible. Located about 100 meters underground, the LHC is a 27-kilometer-long tunnel that serves as the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator. Built by the European Organization for Nuclear Research between 1998 and 2008, 
The collider uses an extremely heavy set of about 9,600 magnets to guide beams of protons as they travel at 99% the speed of light. These beams are then made to hit each other perfectly, and since the tunnel is an airtight negative 271 degrees Celsius vacuum that's colder than the temperature of outer space and filled with 150 million sensors, it allows scientists to gather a very specialized and accurate data about experiments surrounding atoms and molecules. As a result, I think it's fair to say CERN's Large Hadron Collider is of huge benefit to human society. Number 9. Magnetoplasma Rockets In recent years, a lot of time and money has been put into creating spaceships that can efficiently and reliably carry people and cargo up to space, and magnetoplasma rockets share a massive role in this mission. Also known as a Variable Specific Impulse Magnetoplasma Rocket, or Vasimir engine, it works by using special antennas to exert powerful radio frequency waves. These waves ionize the engine's gas, turning it into plasma, then a strong externally applied magnetic field confines, guides, and ultimately accelerates that plasma, letting it escape to provide an extremely powerful thrust. Now, as you might expect, this type of technology is not easy to develop. It took more than 25 years of cooperation between NASA and the Department of Energy, and an additional 15 years of development in the private sector by the Ad Astra rocket company in order to get the technology to where it is today. However, we're now at the point that some believe that we will be able to implement magnetoplasma rockets in actual spaceflight, although only time will tell whether or not they end up being successful. Number 8. Earth Engine in today's day and age, many companies are searching for clean ways to make energy, and while some have been successful, there are usually negative side effects involved. After all, be it the noise of windmills, the existence of nighttime for solar panels, or the coastal destruction caused by wave energy generators, practically every source of clean energy requires a cost-benefit analysis. However, the Earth engine may just be one of the least invasive ways to produce green energy. In essence, the Earth engine uses the force created by two opposing magnets to generate electricity, which in turn can be channeled into the power grid. Due to it creating this energy independent of any external factors, it can run 24-7, and since it requires no heat or combustion, the chances of things going wrong are quite slim. Now, to be fair, Earth engines aren't perfectly green. After all, magnets are a depleting source that requires recharging every three years, and as a result, it can be both expensive to procure magnets and time-consuming to recharge them. However, when compared to its competitors, Earth engines are truly impressive. Number 7. Earthquake Energy While earthquakes are usually seen as destructive, magnets may be able to make them a bit more productive. You see, in 2015, students at the University of Leicester proposed the idea for a machine that can generate power from the kinetic energy of tectonic tremors. The device would consist of a magnet inside of a coil, which would shake during an earthquake. The shaking would generate a magnetic field, which in turn would induce an electrical current that could potentially be harnessed for use as energy. The idea is that this could help generate power during an earthquake, which could supplement the electrical grid until the rest of the grid was repaired. Now, it should be made clear that there is still a long way to go. After all, the paper clearly states that, quote, whilst much more research would be needed to fully apply the idea, the purpose of the paper was to illustrate that there are methods of adapting to events that are usually considered destructive, such as an earthquake, to provide something constructive, end quote. Yet with enough money and research behind it, I don't doubt that this advanced magnetic machine could someday become a reality. Number six, hoverboards. While there are tons of really crappy hoverboards out there that don't actually hover and just use wheels, there are others that potentially do what their names suggest, hover over the ground. And while there are plenty of different variations, some of the coolest ones out there are the ones that make use of magnets. More specifically, hoverboards generally work by using superconductors, which are materials that have no electrical resistance and expel magnetic flux fields. Then, because superconductors expel these magnetic fields, and because magnets have a north-south magnetic field, they essentially interrupt each other. This causes the magnet to lift the superconductor out of its way, suspending it into the air and therefore allowing a hoverboard to hover. Now, there are quite a few cases of these types of hoverboards in action, with one especially cool variation being built in 2015, when the car company Lexus created a liquid nitrogen-filled hoverboard that could levitate when placed on a special magnetic surface. However, given the fact that these types of magnetic hoverboards seem to require a magnetic surface, there are limits to where they can be used. 
and as a result, both fan-propelled and jet-fueled hoverboards have become pretty popular. However, only time will tell whether or not magnetic hoverboards will be able to catch up. Number 5. Solar Wind Energy While there are plenty of strong winds on Earth, none are quite like the winds produced by the sun. That's because they are essentially massive gusts of wind that go out from the sun and then smash into Earth's magnetic field, producing billions of gigawatts of energy in the process. If that could be harnessed, we could quite possibly end our energy issues here on Earth. Yet the proposed solution would be pretty massive. It's estimated that a solar sail that's 8,000 kilometers wide could do the job by harnessing up to a billion gigawatts of energy. It would do so by using a copper wire in order to generate a magnetic field. And this would capture electrons from the wind which could then be transported to Earth with the help of intense laser beams. These laser beams could be targeted at a specific spot on Earth that could then take these beams and convert them into usable energy on a consistent basis. However, as you might expect, the research surrounding such a device has only been theoretical, as it would be extremely difficult to create a solar wind harnessing device that would actually work. Yet, as the Earth's resources continue to become depleted, I wouldn't be surprised if companies start to look into ways to create these massive energy generators. Number 4. MRI Machines when it comes to hospital machines, one of the most useful ones out there is the Magnetic Resonance Imaging Machine, or MRI. After all, MRIs are able to produce extremely detailed images of inside your body. They manage to do so by only using strong magnetic fields and radio waves. And while most MRIs out there use magnets that have a strength of between 1.5 and, and 3 Teslas, in 2021, a new MRI began testing that comes in at a much stronger 11.7 Teslas. While humans have not been put under it quite yet, so far a pumpkin was scanned with smashing results, as after several optimization passes were used, the MRI was able to make images at a resolution of 400 microns in three dimensions. While this is quite incredible in and of itself, MRIs that are safe for use on humans are also being developed. So far, the strongest to have been tested on a human is a 10.5 Tesla MRI out of the University of Minnesota. After four years of animal testing, the team felt comfortable going ahead with human experimentation. And while they were quite nervous, the end result was a super high quality image that was of such high resolution that it revealed intricate details of the wafer thin cartilage that protects the hip socket. So as MRIs continue to become more and more advanced, I'm pretty confident that they'll continue to be of great use to both science and the wider healthcare system. Number 3. The Electromagnetic Bomb Most of the machines on this list are quite powerful, yet the one that's the most destructive by far is the Electromagnetic Bomb. Now, the interesting thing about this bomb is that it can be either extremely deadly or not deadly at all, depending on the type being used. Non-nuclear electromagnetic bombs, which are better known as E-bombs, are weapons that use an intense electromagnetic field to create a brief pulse of energy, which is also known as an electromagnetic pulse, or EMP. This EMP affects electronic circuitry while not harming humans or buildings, and the extent of its damage is dependent on its strength. For example, at lower levels, the pulse temporarily disables electronics. At mid-range levels, it can corrupt computer data, and at very high levels, it can completely destroy electronic circuitry, thus disabling any type of machine that uses electricity, be that computers, radios, or even ignition circuits in vehicles. It is with the help of these types of weapons that advancing enemies can essentially be halted in their tracks, and in the past these types of attacks have been used to disable the satellites that facilitate propaganda. Now, while most E-bombs don't cause physical harm, there's also a class of nuclear EMPs, also known as NEMPs, that do. While every single nuclear bomb has some sort of EMP effect, that effect can be enhanced if the bomb explodes at a high altitude this minimizes blast and heat effects while boosting EMP effects. So nuclear bombs really are the ultimate weapons in that they produce devastating damage, nuclear radiation, and EMPs. And as a result, it makes sense that there have been calls to limit their usage as much as possible. Number 2. Electric Charging Roads in recent years, electric cars have really begun to pick up traction, yet one of the biggest challenges they face is the fact that they can't quickly be filled up at a gas station. After all, while charging electric stations are becoming more and more common, there are many people who worry that they'll run out of power and become stranded in the middle of nowhere. And that's without considering the fact that physically charging one at a charging station can take 15 to 25 minutes. Since this level of uncertainty and long wait time aren't all that attractive, these issues have slowed the adoption of electric vehicles. 
However, one piece of technology that may be able to dispel this worry is electric charging roads. In essence, the idea is that when a car drives over them, the road charges their car and then simply keeps track of the car in order to collect payment. And while a two-kilometer stretch of road unveiled in Sweden by the company E-Road Arlanda managed to transfer energy from the road to an electric vehicle above it via a small mechanical arm, a magnetic version out of the United States is looking far more promising. Developed by the Indiana Department of Transportation and Purdue University, the idea is that it will be the world's first contactless and wireless charging stretch of road. In order to pull this off, they plan to use magnetizable concrete technology that's made by adding small particles of recycled ferrite to the mixture. This creates a magnetic field that transmits power wirelessly to the vehicle, and when powered by electric transmitters, they worked effectively as car chargers. The end result was a piece of road that charges a car while it drives. While this tech is certainly cool, its cost of between $1.1 to $2.8 million per kilometer makes it as much, if not more expensive, than the E-Road Arlanda project. So, unless the project picks up either some seriously deep-pocketed investors or some significant federal funding, chances are that it will take a long time to become mainstream. Number 1. Maglev Lines while the basic technology surrounding maglev lines have been around ever since 1966, some countries in Southeast Asia have recently begun to take the technology to completely new levels. You see, the basic premise of a maglev line is that it uses two sets of magnets, with one set repelling and pushing the train up off the track, while the other moves the elevated train ahead. This takes advantage of the lack of surface-to-surface -surface friction, so that the train can move at incredibly fast speeds, while still being incredibly quiet and smooth. While this led to successful high-speed trains across North America, Europe, and Asia throughout the 1970s and 1980s, a lack of funding caused progress to stall, and today only South Korea, Japan, and China have maglev lines, with the former only having low-speed lines, while a line like Shanghai holds the title of being the world's first and only high-speed maglev line. However, despite these disappointing stats, the idea of maglev lines have begun to resurface. It's mainly because they produce zero carbon emissions, run on electricity, and can go extremely fast. It's with this in mind that some future-thinking countries have begun to make plans to build them, and the most high-profile line is set to be in Japan. The hope is to connect Tokyo to Nagoya by 2027 and Nagoya to Osaka by 2037 and the maglev train involved will travel at speeds of up to 500 kilometers an hour, likely making it the fastest passenger train in the world. Due to its speed, it's estimated that it will be able to make the trip between Tokyo and Nagoya in less than an hour, which is pretty impressive, given at the moment it takes about an hour and 40 minutes. However, about 86% of the Tokyo-Nagoya line will be underground in tunnels, and this has caused some problems in certain parts of the line. This is because there are worries that Shizuoka Prefecture's Oye River may leak into the train's tunnel, causing serious mechanical problems while also severely lowering the river's water levels. As a result, the Central Japan Railway Company has expressed so much concern that the 2027 completion date is likely impossible, although only time will tell what will become of this project. It should also be noted that beyond trains, other products such as maglev elevators that save space and work quietly and efficiently and skyscrapers and maglev fans that eliminate the wobbling and shaking of conventional fans have also been built, I think it's fair to say that maglev technology has got lots of different uses that are pretty incredible. All right, I'll see you next time. Watch our Machines playlist for more top 15 videos about awesome machines. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best machine videos.